Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. With the Spain News Update, we'll take a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press today. And we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on the channel recently by viewers. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's by buying me a coffee through the Super Thanks option on YouTube, longer term supporters on Patreon, thank you very much for that, and also to my valued channel members here on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for that support. Now, let's get into the news and the topic of drought still dominating headlines here in Spain. And apparently in Catalonia, people are turning to desalination as a way to fill up their pools. As we can read here, drought unleashes desalination unit buying fever in Catalonia. Facing the summer months without swimming pools due to the drought is a risk that hotels and campgrounds in Catalonia do not want to take after the Catalan Water Agency stated last week that it was illegal to purchase potable water regardless of its source, the tourism sector is buying portable desalination units in bulk to save the summer season. It's an investment to continue with the service. Otherwise, businesses are going to have to close, argues the head of the company Ecosystems, one of the leaders in the sector where several hoteliers from the Costa Brava and Costa Dorada, such as those in Lloret del Mar, Girona, have turned to get one of those machines. The parliament will vote this Thursday in the plenary on the drought on some resolutions that address its problems. So, there we go. Some people in Catalonia, mainly hoteliers, turning to portable desalination units in order to fill their swimming pools because they don't want to take the risk of having an empty pool this summer and possibly no guests. The Catalan Water Agency has put very strict rules and regulations in place and people desperate to get their hands on fresh water. Now the second piece of news and some bad news as far as the birth rate here in Spain is concerned because in 2023 Spain registered only 300 22,075 births, the lowest since records began in 1941. The number of births in Spain in 2023 was 322,075, a 2% decrease from the previous year, and the lowest figure since the National Institute of Statistics began keeping records in 1941. This decline has significant economic implications, contributing to demographic aging and the inversion of the population pyramid. According to provisional data published this Wednesday by the agency, births have fallen by 24.1% over the last decade. In 2013, 424,440 children were born and in 2023 experienced a decrease of 6,629 compared to the preceding year. Only the community of Madrid and Extremadura recorded more baby arrivals than in the previous year. So there we go. For whatever reason, people here in Spain are not having children like they used to. Children definitely not a priority for a lot of young people in Spain nowadays. And why is this the case? I don't know, but if you have an opinion on the matter, please let me know in the comment section below. Now, Spain's Russian community is worried and is calling for police protection after a Russian war defector was shot dead in Alicante last week. As we can read here, Russian emigres in Spain call for protection after pilot defector shot dead. Russian emigres in Spain, critical of the Kremlin, called on the Spanish authorities on Tuesday to better protect them after a Russian pilot who had defected to Ukraine was found shot dead in a garage in a town on on Spain's Mediterranean coast. Ukraine's GUR military spy service has confirmed that pilot Maxim Kuzminov, who flew to Ukraine with his MI8 helicopter last August, has died in Spain. A Spanish judicial source told Reuters police were convinced Kuzminov was the true identity of a man found a week ago riddled with bullets in an underground garage in the town of Villajoyosa in southeastern Spain, bearing a Ukrainian passport in a suspected fake name. So Russian emigres here in Spain, who have been critical of the Kremlin in the past, worried about the long reach of that regime, especially after that man was shot full of holes down there in Joyosa in the province of Alicante. And the final piece of news we'll look at today, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's one of the strangest stories that I have seen in a long time. Because as we can read here, a parish priest and his partner have been arrested in the town of Don Benito in Badajoz for trafficking Viagra. 
The civil guard has arrested a parish priest from Don Benito and his romantic partner as part of an investigation into the trafficking of Viagra, a medication for treating erectile dysfunction and other powerful aphrodisiacs in this town of Badajoz. The operation is still ongoing and the proceedings have been declared confidential. Sources from the civil guard informed EFE. As Efe has confirmed, the arrested individual is the priest of the San Sebastian Parish and the arrests took place last Monday. It involves a parish priest and his romantic partner who are allegedly involved in a scheme trafficking Viagra and other powerful aphrodisiacs. So there we go, and as I said, one of the strangest stories that I have seen in a long, long time time. A priest in Badajoz and his romantic partner arrested for allegedly selling Viagra and other aphrodisiacs. So a strange story, a very, very strange story in my opinion on so many levels. Now let's have a look at some of the comments that have been left on videos recently. One here from Joe Blogs. Cars, especially second-hand cars, have always been expensive here in Spain. Not just now. It's also very difficult to find a decent second-hand car. Most have been used and abused. Yeah, Joe, thanks for the comment and thanks for adding to the conversation that we have been having in recent times about secondhand cars here in Spain, especially when it comes to importing secondhand cars from other countries outside the European Union. We saw the other day a story about hundreds of people here in Spain that have been caught up in a car scam buying cars that were imported from the United States that can't be registered or driven in the European Union. And somebody also mentioned in the live stream yesterday that the price of second-hand cars, I think in the Canary Islands this person mentioned, was very, very high. And Joe pointing out here that second-hand cars in Spain have always been expensive in his opinion. And also the fact that it's difficult to find a decent second-hand car because as Joe puts it there, they have been used and abused. So if you have bought a second-hand car here in Spain, let us know your experience in the comment section below. One here from Diwali, to those who feel AI is going to benefit our planet, in my opinion, I think there will be many disappointed people in the not too distant future. Yet yeah, Valley, thanks for the comment, and this is another topic that popped up in yesterday's live stream, because Microsoft yesterday announced that it is going to invest billions of euros here in Spain in artificial intelligence. And as we can see here, it's all part of Microsoft's commitment to boost digital innovation and the responsible use of AI that benefits businesses and public administrations in Spain. But as we can see from Develli's comment, not everybody is in favor of artificial intelligence. Now, I don't have enough knowledge on the subject of AI to be able to give an informed opinion on the topic, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Artificial intelligence, good, or bad? Let me know in the comment section below. One here from Elizabeth Stu. I refreshed my memory that Portugal decriminalized personal use for recreational drugs. Wouldn't Spain save money and law enforcement resources by legalizing marijuana and hash? They have been around since the beginning of time. Just wondering what you think. Elizabeth, thanks for the comment. And this is a topic that has been generating a lot of debate on the channel in recent times. The topic of illegal drugs here in Spain, illegal drug trafficking here in Spain, especially cannabis. Almost every week we see a story about illegal cannabis crops being discovered somewhere in Spain, mainly in Andalusia and the Canary Islands in recent times. And let's not forget the issue of drug trafficking from Morocco to the south of Spain that caused the deaths of two police officers last week or the week before. I think it was. And when it comes to decriminalizing marijuana and hash here in Spain, I think those two substances already are decriminalized. They are illegal, but they are decriminalized. And I don't think too many police officers are wasting their time because people are smoking joints or have a little bit of hash in their pockets. The main issue here is the illegal trafficking of huge amounts of this illegal substance that, as I said before, comes from Morocco into southern Spain. And this is where things get nasty because it is a very, very lucrative business, especially if you're able to get that product into northern European countries where people pay a lot more money for it than they do here. In fact, I think people in the north of Europe pay up to three times more for a gram of cannabis than they do here in Spain, but don't quote me on that figure. 
So that's the main issue here, Elizabeth, the illegal trafficking of this product. And that's where a lot of the police resources are spent trying to stop that illegal drug trafficking. One here from RG. Hi, Stuart. I saw another YouTube that featured a visit to Spanish Costco. I was surprised to see that the famous $1.50 hot dog is available. Costco has never raised the price of their hot dog in 20 years. And at least over here, it includes a 20 ounce soft drink with a free refill. Yeah, RG, thanks for the comment. But to be completely honest with you, I'm not familiar with the brand Costco here in Spain. I know it exists, but I have never been. And the main reason for that is that you have to become a member of Costco to be able to shop there. I believe. However, my brother-in-law is a member of Costco and he goes regularly and every time I go to his house, he puts out Costco products for us to enjoy. And the products that I have tried seem to be quite good, especially when it comes to the red wine, the Spanish red wine that they have. Very, very good. Kirkland, I think, is the brand name. So if that's anything to go by, they seem to have fairly decent quality products. And when it comes to the $1.50 Costco hot dog that you mentioned in your comment, not sure how much it costs here, but I'll ask my brother-in-law the next time I see him. One here from High Octane, maybe it's because I've become more pragmatic as I get older, but if you're on vacation in Spain, you shouldn't be searching for a pool to swim in. You should be having a glorious adventure. You can swim in a pool in your own backyard if it is important to you. Spain has spectacular beaches, just go play in the Mediterranean. Yeah, High Octane, thanks for the comment, and in reply to another comment that we saw the other day from somebody that was complaining about the fact that they couldn't use the pool at the hotel they were staying at in Malaga. Many towns in Malaga, as we know, have water restrictions currently in place, and that means that a lot of pools in Malaga aren't in use. And I agree with High Octane that there are plenty of other things to do here in Spain other than go for a swim in the pool. Go for a swim in the Mediterranean Sea, for example, but it might be a bit cold at this time of the year. One here from Patricia, Tenerife is so full of cars, more coming in every day. No room on the roads. Daily, the motorway is at a standstill. 40 years ago, they turned down a north-south train. Short-sighted, everybody now suffering. Yeah, Patricia, thanks for the comment, but careful with the spelling of the word cited. And I have heard that the island of Tenerife has its traffic problems nowadays. I've also heard that it's a problem on the island of Gran Canaria too. And I've also heard that on both islands, there's talk about building a train line to take people from one side of the island to the other. But as you point out there, it hasn't been done yet. So what are they waiting for? That's the question. And the final one here from Diego, the infamous Spanish stereotype in this case becomes true. Unfortunately, Doñana, Manana, Manana. Yeah, Diego, thanks for the comment. And Diego highlighting there that Spanish stereotype of Manana tomorrow, especially when it comes to putting things off until tomorrow. A lot of people seem to be in no hurry to get things done today, so the word manana can often be heard. And unfortunately, in the case of Doñana, those endangered wetlands down there in the south of Spain, the term manana has again raised its ugly head because the central government has suspended a plan to compensate farmers in that area and get them off those wetlands, especially people that are growing strawberries in that part of Spain. So the apparent urgency that the government had to fix this problem a few months ago disappearing. Mañana lo solucionamos. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. If you have anything to add to the conversation today, please do so in that comment section. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.